Welcome to our Q&A Monday. I am Annette Reeder from TheBiblicalNutritionist.com and today I'm answering your questions. So these are questions that you have asked of me either on our private Facebook page, Biblical Nutrition Academy, or here on YouTube. So let me just answer your questions. Today I'm going to answer about einkorn flour, underweight child with allergies, unleavened bread, and how to make your own bread products. So we got a lot of bread going on today, so this is a good topic and I love talking about it. Because when my husband and I started our transition into healthy living, bread was where we started. With most people, that's what they ditch first. Well, there's a good reason to ditch the bread that's in the store and in the restaurant. So let's talk about this today. I hope you have already hit the subscribe button. I hope you hit the like button. I hope you hit the bell next to it if you're on YouTube. I hope you have subscribed to the podcast. So many opportunities to learn biblical nutrition. And it's my joy to serve you God's recipe for excellent health. And that starts with you. That starts with you. And also understanding that God loves you. And you know what? I do too. Question number one. This was submitted by The Cronk. I just bought einkorn flour, but what you're saying is that I should be buying the actual grains instead. I've been gluten intolerant for 15 plus years, so just wanted to see if I could actually eat einkorn. If so, then I'll definitely get the grains and milled for the next time. Great video, by the way. So much info. God bless. Well, thank you so much for this comment and this question, and you are so right. Number one, let me just say congratulations. Great job on choosing einkorn. It's an incredible grain that you should tolerate well. I hope you tolerate it well. And as you have already learned and figured out, we do want to use the grains ourselves and mill it ourselves because then we control our health. But you know, you've got to start somewhere. And I started with letting someone else mill my own grains before I had my own mill. So it's steps that we take and then when I knew it was the right thing, I just went all in. <laughs> so I went all in, bought the mill, bought the mixer, and I was like, I was set. And I'm still set. So yes, you're right. And once flour is milled, it starts losing its nutritional value. So if you're buying flour that wasn't in the refrigerator or in the freezer section, then you're already losing nutritional content. So make sure where you buy the flour is also it's been well cared for. Once you start milling it, whatever you don't use initially in your baking time, be sure and put that either in the refrigerator or the freezer until you're ready to use it again. Now, typically we say a month in the freezer. I don't always date my flowers because I just use them randomly and I use them and then I'll mill some more and I'll use it and I'll mill some more. So the crunk, that's a really good question. I appreciate it. And same back to you. Kudos to you. God bless you for what you're doing and how you're trying to take care of your health. Now let's look at question number two. Number two, what can I do for an underweight child with food allergies? Thank you from in the midst of blessings. All right, good question. And I, I've got to tell you though, this question is difficult for me to answer for one because just for legal reasons. And so I'm going to have to give you more generic answers. I would rather talk with you in our private Facebook group or on our coaching calls. Make sure you're on my email list so you get notified when I start another coaching series because the value is incredible. The time spent with me is a lot for, for the value and we can answer these more specifically. We can get to a little bit more of the root of the problem. So make sure you're on my email list. You can sign up for that at thebiblicalnutritionist.com. That way you get notified. All specials are notified that way through our email list. All right, let's see what we can do for you today. This is a really good question. So I've got three parts to my answer that I wanna share with you. The first one, let's talk about the allergies. Now I assume that you are very well familiar there's a difference between allergies and food sensitivity. So I'm just gonna share this for everyone else who's listening. So one way we can know if we have a food sensitivity is by having specific blood work done. And there are specific tests now that provide what food sensitivities you have. That's totally different than a food allergy. A food allergy means you need an EpiPen, you're gonna have a reaction. 
food sensitivities, you're just not going to feel good. Food sensitivities can heal. Allergies typically, typically cannot. And so we need to know the difference. Food sensitivities, you can just do a food rotation diet and you'll discover them. Typically what you crave is what you don't need <laughs> because you know, when you have candida and things like that, you're going to crave sugar and you don't need sugar. That's not a food sensitivity. That's just an announcement that you shouldn't be eating that. So we need to understand the difference between an allergy and a food sensitivity. The second part of our answer is about food. So here's a, something I'd like you to do with your child. I want you to write down, make a list. Now I don't know what age of the child this is, so this may be easier or may not be. Write down a list of all of the foods the child loves. Now I'm not leaning towards if he loves it, you can't have it. What I want to know is what foods does he really love? Make, don't even criticize the list, just write it down. Then I want you to go back and circle the foods that are healthy that he likes. So we need to start feeding him, and you're probably already doing this, we need to feed him the foods that are healthiest. So what has the healthiest protein, what has the healthiest fats, the healthiest fiber, and nutritional value. And then let's make sure we're getting those into his diet. Uh, so that's where I would start. Then I would encourage eating from the list and also track when is the child hungry and what foods are eaten when the child is the hungriest. Make dinner time a relaxing time. Many times families have emotional drama happening at mealtime and that interferes with the child's ability to eat. And we're going to talk about supplements too next. So but before we go there, emotional drama can inhibit the microbiome from absorbing nutrients. Stress totally changes our hormones. Hormones affect whether or not we can absorb nutrition. Hormones affect whether we gain weight or lose weight. And so we need to address that with the child. Is there any emotional drama happening? I mean, it's happening a lot. So um, I don't know you, so I'm not trying to accuse you. So just understand my heart. We need to know. And so just make dinner time peaceful. Make it relaxing. Make it a dinner table that everyone wants to come to. And take time during dinner time to listen to every family member and hear what's going on in their day. You're, it's amazing, as I teach in the coaching class, there's more happening here than there is in our stomach. And this is going to determine how well our stomach works. And then lastly is supplements. So supplements are very important. So multivitamin, you will hear me say this over and over and over, multivitamin is, is in paramount. We've got to have multivitamins in every age of the family. The, the multivitamin that I take is actually from a company called Amari, Amari Global, and I can put a link to that down below, but it has a multivitamin with actually some gut um, GBX included in it, which means it helps to heal the microbiome. The healthier the microbiome is, the more they're going to absorb the nutrition. When we are absorbing better nutrition, we can start gaining and maintaining weight. Now, along with the multivitamin, I would follow that up with some enzymes. So every food group, so you got the, the dairy, you've got the, um, the legumes, the proteins, you've got um, the carbs. They all have different enzymes to break down those foods. Your body, your mind tells your pancreas what enzymes to make, and then your digestive system has what it needs. So when we have enzymes, it's able to break down the different food categories. When it can break it down efficiently, our body can absorb it and utilize it. When we don't have enzymes in our food or we have something inhibiting the enzymes in the pancreas or the stress level, then we can't break down our food. We cannot absorb it. And for many children, that means they're going to be underweight and the nutrition just is passing through. So we really need to correct a couple of those things. And these are some suggestions I can give you over the YouTube channel. I can give you a lot more in person. So maybe we'll meet someday and discuss this. Thanks for asking. Question number three. Annette, would it be possible to make just one large loaf of unleavened bread from four quarts of flour that weigh around 11 pounds? Would it hold together and still be edible or would it have to be leavened? Okay, she says, I'm trying to figure out if the show bread was leavened or unleavened, and this was submitted by Diana Green. Okay, Diana, <laughs> I just have to tell you, I hadn't even thought about is the show bread leavened bread or unleavened bread? Why had I not even asked myself that question? <laughs> so when you wrote that, I was like, oh, I never thought about it. So I had to do some digging, and I have a, I have a feeling that you've already been doing some digging as well. 
And so there's, you have what's written in scripture, which is not clear. Then you have what's written by Josephus and some of the historians. And Josephus is kind of talking about how it probably was an unleavened bread, just because of different reasons. And I, the more I thought about it, I was like, I bet it was unleavened bread. I really do. I do not believe it was a baked loaf of bread. I believe it was the unleavened bread. That's what Jesus had at the Last Supper with his disciples. That's what we use for celebrating the different uh, memorial things that happen in Scripture. So I am so glad you asked that question. You wouldn't believe how you delighted me. Although I haven't answered your question, and that is the 11 pounds of flour. So I had to go back and do the math. So one pound of flour is like three and a third cups of flour. Well, 11 takes you all the way up to like 38 cups of flour. That's a lot of flour. And so I'm, I'm assuming you're cooking for a your whole church or your whole congregation or something. That would not be edible. So maybe this has been written wrong. I'm not sure. Maybe you meant 1.1 pounds. I'm not sure. But it says 11 pounds in the question. So yes, I think that would be very unedible. What I instead is I would make small unleavened bread you know, little cakes, and I would freeze what you don't need and then pass around what you're going to enjoy. Make some of them cinnamon, make some of them garlic and onions, change up the flavor, the varieties, and just enjoy them. So I hope this answers your question. And thanks again for opening my mind to what I hadn't thought of yet. Number four, I'm new here and was wondering how do you make your own bread products? And this was submitted by Laura uh, Masaji. Laura, I just want to say thank you for the question. I love the question. It's what I asked in the very beginning myself. So it is, you are on a journey and it's going to be a delight. Okay, so yes, I do have a video that tells you everything you need to know from beginning to end. This video was originally recorded at our Treasures of Healthy Living Bible Study class. We have the Bible study. I'll just show you my copy here. Now mine is spiral bound because I, I made it this way, but they don't normally come this way. I have used this book so many times. I have taught so many classes out of it. It's just um, spiral bound to hold it together. It's an amazing book. But with that book, we also produced a whole video series. So you can teach this class to your church, to your family, to your, um, your support group, whatever, and use the materials. So here's the key for you though. In that video series, I made the video on how to make your own bread. Well, we have just since released it here on this YouTube channel. And if you're listening to this on podcast, you can go to our YouTube channel and grab this video. And it is called How to Make Bread, How to Make Healthy Bread Fast. And fast may be a relative term, but literally within two hours, you can start from milling your own grain to buttering your cinnamon rolls and your bread and enjoying it. So usually my bread classes were two hours and that included lots of teaching time. So in that video, you're going to see everything, how to mill, how to bake, what utensils you need, everything. If you have any questions beyond that, just, you know, once again, ask me here and I'll answer it. Now you're going to use that flour for everything from pancakes to waffles to muffins to biscuits to bread to cookies to cakes, everything. It's your flour for everything, even breading meat to whatever, my breadcrumbs, my um, croutons, everything, unleavened bread like we just talked about. Yeah, everything's going to come from that freshly milled flour and you're going to love it. All right, so this is a really good question. And just remember the nutritional value of milling means you get all of that nutrition for your body and your family's health. When we buy flour already milled, like I just said in a previous question, if it hasn't been kept cold and refrigerated, you're losing nutritional value. Once it's baked, you got it for good. All right, this is a really good question. Thanks for answering. I just wanna thank all of you for asking these good questions, questions that helped me start thinking, things I hadn't thought of before, things I hadn't shared with you before. And that means together we make a great team. Hi, I'm Annette Reeder, the Biblical Nutritionist. I am so glad you joined me today. And remember this, God loves you. I love you. And together we can finish this race well. And remember, God has a purpose for your life. Every human being from the moment of conception is in God's eyes, is in God's eyes loved and has a purpose. Thank you for watching.